Hi, good morning, and welcome to today's products in focus. So we'll be looking at the US there in a second. Um, we just got to talk a little bit about um, some of the um, data that's been coming out of the US uh, yesterday and what's, what's uh, due to come out later on today. There was a lot of um, and kind of inflation data that came out of the Eurozone that was surprisingly better than what was expected. And then last night, we also had uh, an interest rate statement from the uh, Royal Bank of Australia, uh, which was um, way more hawkish than what most commentators had thought. So you've been seeing some big moves in the Aussie dollar uh, over the, over, overnight as well. And the euro has strengthened quite strongly as a, as a Greek deal looks more likely. And uh, euro bond yields kind of shot up yesterday on the back of that uh, news as well. So very, very interesting uh, markets that we're in right now. Most global equity markets are a little bit flat, to be honest. All the action has been on FX predominantly. And come back to that in a second. So, because this inflation data came in quite a lot better than expected in the eurozone, that caused uh, an influx of buying of yields, which then also pushed up the value of the euro. You combine that together with the hopes, strong hopes for euro deal. Euro has gone um, stratospheric yesterday, uh, jumping like way over 100 points. Considering how much dollar strength's been in the market. Uh, the euro just dominated and the US dollar kind of unraveled ever so slightly yesterday. So you can see the um, the kind of the hammer formation that we got here, but we were down much lower uh, and then we rallied up still down for the day, um, but just above that potential resistance level, support level at 18,000. Now we've had a little bit of a bounce this morning. Uh, Germany 30 is flat, UK 100 is not doing a huge amount, uh, but today does carry with it a huge amount of uh, global macro data from America and the Eurozone. So if you're trading FX, it's a, it's a big day today, I think. And uh, we'll cover that in a little bit, a little bit uh, further on throughout the session. But ADP, ADP private payrolls is what a lot of people will be looking at later on. So looking at the UK 100, very negative day yesterday, actually smashing through that potential uh, trend line, but most importantly, finishing bang on that line. The fact that it's been broken, the UK 100 was looking pretty ugly yesterday. Um, and this break of this trend line is, is relatively significant. Very top heavy, almost a head and shoulders formation kind of forming right here. If we if we break some sort of neckline support right here, you could be looking at 67.71. Um, which to be fair, the, the UK 100, 100 most global equity market could do with maybe coming off a little bit more before we uh, start to have a, a resumption of any meaningful uptrend, because valuations seem feel quite high considering the economic back backdrop. Uh, as, as to what's happening and um, this this break of this trend line here I, I think is going to be uh, significant for a lot of technical traders we've also got a death cross on the moving averages the other technicals are quite neutral with the MACD crossing the zero line but uh, the UK 100 it really needs to stay above 6906 if it's gonna if it's gonna remain at the top end otherwise uh, 6771 is the next potential support Japan 225 so Dollar yen reverse course, uh, a fair bit yesterday we were back down below 124. Um, you can see we've got a bearish engulfing pattern in Japan 225. It's ticked up ever so slightly today, looking a bit top heavy as well. There's nothing else really changed here from a technical perspective. Still looking at 28.68 as long term potential support. Dollar strength is not expected to dramatically change. Uh, unless the economic data today completely misses uh, all expectations and it's been coming in better than expectations the last couple of sessions. So moving on to WM, quite a strong reversal yesterday, uh, back below potential support slash resistance, 124.42. Longer term potential support still 126, 130-ish, should things get back on track. But um, this isn't a great candle to have at the top of an uptrend, to be honest. Not quite a full bearish engulfing. Uh, well, it's not a bearish engulfing pattern at all. In fact, it's not actually closed. It's not completely eclipsed the full price action from the previous session, but it's quite close. So moving on to West Texas crude, um, moving up nicely, actually, uh, almost getting to the recent high points at 61.73. It's not quite there yet, uh, with 59.50 expected to be a potential springboard for a move higher. Um, that mainly is getting a little bit of extra shot in the arm because the dollar has reversed course ever so slightly. And if you have a look at gold, it's not really going to be doing a huge amount. I'm not expecting, even, even with dollar weakness, uh, interest rate increases uh, on, the, on, the, on the kind of back burner are going to put a lot of gold traders off. People aren't going to really build up a huge massive gold position if they're going to be uh, increasing rates sooner rather than later. So pressure always remains. Any bit of good news coming out of the US is going to continue to hurt gold but it's stayed above 11.86 for quite some time now. 
So moving on to euro dollar, you can just see this huge massive spike up at one spot 11. It's broken resistance now, expect to, to act as support again. Temporarily capped by that 21 period SMA. You can see the tips of these candles uh, are indicative of, of the importance of this level. Longer term potential resistance, one spot 1642. Otherwise, another reversal will bring us back down to one spot 0786. So finishing up with GBP USD, strong reversal again. Uh, bullish engulfing pattern, not necessarily uh, sterling strength, but the dollar is having a little bit of reversal. One spot, 54.24 is the next potential resistance level. And the other technical indicators here are relatively neutral. Uh, there's in between two moving averages, you've got that 55 period SME here and the 21 period SME right here. So looking at the economic data wise, you do have a whole host of inflation data. You've got German PMI, Eurozone PMI, UK PMI, Eurozone employment data, Eurozone employment sales, ADP private payrolls, a trade balance and PMI in the US, followed by your credit inventories later on in the session. So lots of incredibly <laughs> important information here. So make sure you don't miss that. And if we fast forward on to Thursday, you've got uh, interest rate data uh, coming from the UK. Uh, and employment claims from the US. But today's a big day for a lot of FX between cable, euro dollar. Um, so much data due out today. As ever, keep you on the chart forum, make insights popular going forward, and join me again tomorrow to find out what happened next.